my name is Claire and this is Stitch M So. Thank you so much for joining me today for another episode of Friday Sews. Now if you're a regular watcher or subscriber you'll have realised that I didn't upload a video for Friday Sews last week so apologies for that but I did upload a pattern review video on the Saturday of the Lisa hoodie by Bobbins and Buttons and if you haven't seen that I'd love it if you would check it out so I'll pop a card in above and link it in the description box below if you'd like to take a look at that as well. So in terms of sewing for the last few weeks, a uh, couple of weeks, uh, I have got my sojo back, you'll be pleased to know, and um, I've sewed up a few things in the last couple of weeks, so that's been really fantastic. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that commented on my last video in particular, well everybody that comments generally or likes and, and subscribes but last my last Friday Sews video um, I was feeling a bit disheartened I'd had a couple of uh, sewing fails if you like and uh, so many of you took the time to comment particularly in relation to the Anna Anthea, Anna Allen Anthea vows which um, I was struggling in relation to um, the neck line and how I felt that sat on myself. I'll pop a picture in of me wearing that one and lots of you were suggested that perhaps uh, a V neckline as I discussed in the video they thought would look a bit better on me um, possibly reducing the puff of the sleeves or uh, decreasing the length of the sleeve so it wasn't quite so um, full on um, so just thank you so much. Everybody was really kind and constructive with the comments. So I really do appreciate that. And I thank you so much for taking the time to to respond to me. I really, really do appreciate everybody that comments. I try to answer everybody that drops me a comment. So thank you so, so much. So on to what I've been up to. I've sewn three items in the last couple of weeks. The first item is for a collaboration I'm doing with the lovely Marissa from the Umbrian Serist and that video will be coming out in a couple of weeks time and so I won't go into any details about that at the moment uh, but the next pattern I can tell you about and that is I sewed up the sage brush top. Now I hadn't particularly planned to do that I don't think, I can't quite remember what I said in my last um, Friday sews but I had um, got a piece of a remnant piece of viscose fabric from the wonderful Felicity Fabrics and I had 1.2 meters of it yes I did talk about it in the video because somebody commented about it and this is my version so it is a lovely black base uh, with this sort of ditzy print on it's got that, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but it's got um, a lovely, the lovely ruffle here, uh, the poofy sleeves, which are nice and drapey in the viscose, and uh, it's got sort of the, the back detail. Now, because I only had 1.2 metres of this fabric, I needed to do a bit of pattern Tetris. Now, I watched the lovely Liz, who is the baker that sews, who she's done a video on how to get um, the sagebrush top and the Anna Anthea, Anna Allen Anthea Bowles. One day I'll get that right. And um, yeah, how to get it out of a metre of fabric. Now, Liz is quite a lot smaller than me, so I managed to get this out of a 1.2 metre of fabric. And um, the only thing I had to do differently was to, um, I couldn't cut the bias strip as a whole piece. I needed to cut it into sections and I also didn't cut the full amount because I decided that I would do um, a button on the back instead of the tie detail uh, and that way I wouldn't need as much bias binding. And so what I've done, as you can see there, I've just popped a little button on and I've just done a little thread um, loop there as well uh, where you make it with the, with cotton. So that's turned out really nicely. I'm really pleased with that. And I actually, I've made this top before. I made it in a cotton fabric, um, a white cotton with 
feathers on and I'll pop a picture up of that of me wearing that I prefer this version if I'm honest with you I think it's just the drape of it on those puffy sleeves is a little less sort of in your face if you like um, but it's still there's still puff there but without it being quite so full-on I still will wear the other one but I have to kind of be in the mood for a little bit more of a statement sleeve if you like so yeah really really chuffed with this one um, and it was it's nice to have made a couple of things <laughs> in the last few weeks that have gone to plan rather than them being a bit of a sewing fail so that is the sage brush top by Friday Pattern Company um, beautiful instructions to follow really clear very much hold your hand great for beginners from that point of view sage so, um friday pattern company patterns and um and a really good size range as well so uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't already seen it before i'm sure you have it's taken the sewing community by storm this pattern um but yeah super pleased with this one the next item that I sewed up was this dress, which is the chalk and notch fringe dress, and it's the version A. There's two different versions that you can do, version A and version B. Version A has a button placket, and version B has um, sort of a, a neckline detail, and I'll pop a picture up to show you what I mean uh, by that. So... As I say, I'll pop some pictures up on the screen as well, but basically it's got this um, detail here on the neckline. I've done the the uh, tie detail just to cinch it in a little bit. And as you can see, I've done the button placket. What I haven't done is the tab bits on the sleeves. I've just turned those up. The reason I didn't, I cut out the the tabs I had every intention of doing that um, but then I thought about how I when and where I would be wearing this and I decided that I'm highly likely to want to put on a little denim jacket or a cardigan of some sort and I just thought those little um, tab things would um, would end up getting caught um, and sort of ruck up the sleeve and it would be annoying within the sleeve itself so I decided not to do those I do need to just tack those down as you can see I was just playing with the sleeve there because it just not it's not quite sitting right I had tacked it down but I think I just need to do that a little bit better as I was saying before I've chosen to do the version with the button packet I've lengthened the bodice by an inch and um, I've also lengthened the skirt by an inch. I believe the pattern might be drafted for a person of a five foot seven. I'm not quite sure I'm going to put those details up on the screen. I'm about five foot eight, five foot nine. Um, and I knew I wanted this to come uh, sort of just below knee height. Um, and, but I also know that I'm, I generally have to add a little bit of uh, length to a bodice pattern just to kind of make it fall at the point where I want it to. I also uh, lowered the bust darts by an inch and obviously because I'd uh, added an inch to the length of the bodice I also had to kind of uh, slightly lower obviously the length where these um, darts were coming to. So I've done the CD bust cup, so that gives you a bust dart on uh, actually at the side, as well as these sort of waist darts. Uh, there's also um, darts at the back um, <laughs> of the dress, which I forgot to do. Um, at the point where I could have put them in, um, I decided that actually I tried the bodice on and I was okay without them. Um, it would have been fine to put them in as well. It would have just brought the back in a little bit, but I decided that actually I was had done the waist ties anyway. That was going to cinch the dress in if I wanted to make it a bit tighter. But actually, if it was on a warm day, that it would be quite nice that it was a little bit more breezy. So yeah, that was a sort of a happy accident really. 
So I, uh, before I started making this dress, I did watch the tutorial that Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door had done on the chalk and notch fringe dress. I found this super helpful. She's really easy to follow along with if you haven't ever seen one of her sort of tutorial sew along type videos. Uh, so it's well worth checking out. I definitely took on board the tip of um, doing the button placket uh, before popping in the darts because then you're doing that on the flat rather than having to pop in this sort of section whilst uh, the fabric is already kind of becoming 3D by putting the darts in. So that was a really useful tip. On the version that Andrew was doing, she actually was doing version uh, B, but the same sort of principle of applies that actually it's easier to put in uh, this detail on the flat rather than um, before. Uh, so to do it before you put the, the darts in. So thank you, Andrea, for that. I found that super helpful. Um, and she she has lots of other hints and tips along the way in relation to to this to making this item. So definitely do check out that video. I'll link it in the description below. So I've this is the dress actually. A big thank you to everybody that voted for this dress. Um, in my May plans, I'd uh, shown this particular piece of fabric and I put a poll up on my community tab asking for people to vote on which dress I should make from it. The choices were the uh, winter wear designs, Satara dress, the Tilly in the Buttons Lyra and the Chalk and Notch Fringe. And the Chalk and Notch Fringe um, won out, so obviously that was the one that I made. I'm super pleased with this make. Um, the only thing I've done other than obviously I missed out the back darts but I was okay with that. Because I changed the um, length of the bodice slightly, I thought that I'd done the buttons um, in the right place, but actually this one could do with being slightly higher up. Um, so I've actually got a little safety pin in there at the moment just to keep this section just sort of sitting right. And what I'm gonna do is just pop a little popper in there at some point as well, but the safety pin's doing its job. But what I do like about, in terms of where I've put the buttons, is this button here comes right in the middle of my, my breast. <laughs> so I don't get that kind of like pulling effect because I feel like it's right in the right place. So I'm really super happy with that. So I made this dress using a viscose twill fabric. I liked and disliked sewing with this fabric sort of in equal measure. It frayed terribly in relation to other fabrics that I've sewn with, um, but it pressed beautifully. And whilst it did kind of shift around a little bit, it wasn't anywhere near kind of what some sort of slippery fabrics are. So all in all, it was pretty nice to sew with. And I'm really, really pleased with the outcome of this dress and I, it was definitely one that I would recommend. So that's what I got done in terms of sewing um, in the last couple of weeks. I haven't bought any fabric, which is pretty impressive, um, but I have bought one sewing related item. Now, if you are in the UK or you have got access to the BBC, um, it's very likely that you have been, been watching the Sewing Bee. And so I couldn't resist in buying this book today. So it comes uh, the book and then you get a um, a box package if you like with the, the patterns in. But you can also download the patterns as well which is what I will probably be doing because I find tracing sort of one of my least favourite things to do along with cutting out of fabric. That's not my favourite thing in the world either. But um, tracing definitely and trying to when things are kind of crossed over with each other I'd much rather download a PDF and have to stick it together um, or better still send it to a copy shop so I have bought the uh, the greatest British sewing be the modern war wardrobe and this is the one that Juliet Ozo Uzo Ozo sorry I'm saying that completely wrong um, has uh, written and uh, Juliet was the winner of um, 2019 sewing bee, I think. Or was it 18? I'm not quite sure. I'll pop that up on the screen. And um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this book because I don't want to give it away if you're looking to buy it perhaps after the end of the series. 
but a couple of items that have already come up on the show that um people might be interested in um, one is the uh, sheared dress, which I know people are super, are super into at the moment, uh, shearing with these sort of lovely sort of balloon sleeves, very much like um, Brogan um, on the sewing bee is very much into. And uh, the other one is the gorgeous uh, quilted jacket, which I, <laughs> is very in at the moment, isn't it? And um, yeah, I really like this one. No, I wouldn't necessarily do the the squares. I don't know, but I am quite drawn to this this um, this one, and I think it it's a really cute item. And I'm sh sure there's been lots of versions already been whipped up, and I will definitely be checking that out on Instagram. As I say, I've only just picked this book up today. I picked this up from my local Sainsbury's, which is a supermarket in the UK, and they were on offer for fifteen pound, which is well below the sort of uh, recommended retail price. I don't quite know what that is, um, but it's definitely, uh, when I looked on Amazon earlier on today, it was lower than that as well. So yeah, really super happy with that. Plus my husband um, currently works at Sainsbury, so I got a discount as well. So that's ideal and uh, <laughs> meant it was even cheaper. So really looking forward to thumbing through that over the next few days and seeing what I might like to to make. So in terms of sewing plans for the next week or so, I haven't put together my uh, plans video for June yet, um, but I will be doing so. I'm, I've am i ordered some fabrics, they're yet to um, arrive on some of them I haven't quite even ordered yet, so that will I will do that video in a week or so. Um, but obviously I'm already getting started on some of my plans and um, one of the things that I'm looking to do this month is a collaboration project with the lovely Crystal from my social thread. Um, you will know that Crystal and I are friends. Uh, uh, Crystal asked me to join in with the sewing challenge that herself and uh, Adele from Sofa Serenity were running in April and that was uh, to do all to do with selfless sewing and but before that we'd we got to know each other and we had decided that we were going to do a collaboration project together we were thinking that we might do it last month but we were both super busy and so we are going to do it this month we're actually doing uh, two patterns um, two items both doing things obviously slightly differently in terms of fabric choices and things so they'll look quite different we've both got completely different body shapes obviously um, but we thought we would share the patterns that we are making and what we will be what fabrics we'll be using so um, hopefully you'll enjoy seeing those so thank you to Crystal super looking forward to seeing your versions as well and what fabric you've chosen I'm sure it's going to be beautiful and um, let's see what those patterns are that I keep harping on about so the first pattern is sorry that these are just um, black and white photocopies is the pearl cardigan by Tilly and the buttons and I um, am looking to sew that one up in this teal jersey fabric uh, I think I think that I'm probably going to do the long sleeved version. I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to do with the slight balloon sleeve or not. Um, there's three different sleeve options with the pearl cardigan. You can do a straight sleeve, a, a slight balloon sleeve. It's, it's not ballooned at the top, it's just at the bottom and it's not too full on. It's not as big, I don't think, as the balloon on uh, the Billy jumper. Um, that's also obviously a Tilly in the Buttons pattern um, and you can also do a short sleeve version and then obviously it's got this lovely tie detail around the bo bottom. Now it's quite a cropped cardigan and um, Tilly's block I think is drafted for five foot five and as I've said before I'm about five foot eight, five foot nine. I really should measure myself at some point so that I can just stop saying five foot eight, five foot nine and um, so I and also I know that it is designed to be you know a cropped cardigan it's tight it's designed to come 
kind of at the top of a high-waisted uh, jean you know right at the top not even covering the waistband so as you can see like on here you've got it's, it's very cropped um, and that isn't something I feel would suit me so I have altered the pattern slightly um, to make it a little bit longer and obviously that I've had to lengthen the band around um, and I've slightly tw um, had to tweak the um, uh, the waistband as well just drop the pattern and so um, I'm yet to cut out the fabric I've just worked today on the actual pattern itself to hopefully get those uh, details changed to suit my body shape so fingers crossed that one will work out quite well now the second pattern that we're looking to sew up is the Jennifer Lauren Handmade Bastion Culottes. Um, this is a really interesting pattern in the sense of this sort of front bit with these uh, button up bits also kind of makes the pocket detail as well. Um, if you haven't ever seen Liz the Baker that sews has done several different versions of these she's a great fan of this particular pattern and has made some gorgeous versions so that's well worth checking out as well um, it's showing two different lengths there um, I'm not quite sure what length I'm going to go for um, I'm not really a midi person um, so I'm probably going to go for the more the knee version if I'm quite honest with you I keep trying the whole midi thing and every time I try I just feel a little bit like I'm sort of drowning in fabric and I feel it, it on myself it looks I feel a little bit frumpy I don't think it looks like that on other people I think it looks fantastic but on me I'm not so keen so the fabric that I have chosen um, which I think will pair really nicely with the teal because it's got teal within the fabric itself. It's this cotton poplin fabric with these sort of tropical flowers all over. Quite summery, I think, but this sort of the dark base um, makes it sort of more. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, really. It just, I really like the dark base on it. So, um, I'm really hoping that that pairing will work quite nicely as you can see this uh, teal picks out the teal in the leaves here and hopefully that will look really nice. So what I might do before cutting into this particular fabric is I've got some navy poly cotton fabric and I might try a toile I think in those first of all so it might take me a few weeks before I get to the point of actually sewing up this particular um, fabric into them as well. I've also got um, some chambray fabric which I think would look beautiful in this particular pattern if I like it so along the route I might be making a few pairs if I'm particularly into it. So folks I think that's all from me today. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have do give me a like. If you haven't subscribed I'd love it if you consider doing so. I do hope you manage to fit in some sewing this week. If you're in the UK, I hope you have a fantastic bank holiday jubilee weekend. But until next time, folks, take care. Happy sewing. Bye bye.